Hello and welcome to today's Delta Credit Tip. So today we're talking about the coronavirus and your credit. We're going to expand our discussion to talk about programs that have been recently put in place to help you in case of a financial hardship, which will hopefully help you with your credit in the long run. So stay tuned. We're going to fill you in today on a very important new act that came out. So stay tuned. We're going to fill you in on today's Delta Credit Tip. Hello and welcome back to today's Delta Credit Tip. I'm Michael Holmes, bringing you yet more information to help you in your credit restoration process. Today we're talking again in this extended series that we're doing on the coronavirus and your credit. While this may not be the traditional video about credit repair, remember for us, credit repair is a behavior, not a score. And so we really wanna make sure that we're not getting ourselves into situations where we have this financial hardship, or at least that we now know what programs we can get help from to help prevent us from getting into this financial hardship, which for a lot of people is coming. Hopefully this information is helpful. If so, give us a thumbs up, and more importantly, subscribe and hit that notification bell. We're gonna be coming out with more information throughout the week. We're gonna talk about not only the governmental programs that are out there to help you, but we're also gonna talk about all the private programs that are available through Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, different mortgage lenders, different credit card companies, different auto lenders. We're gonna go through a lot of different programs that a lot of these companies have put in place, some of the highs, some of the pitfalls, and we really are putting this out there so that we can help ourselves to make a choice, to make a change here with Delta. So let's first dive into the Family First Coronavirus Response Act. There's a lot of different acts that are kind of falling underneath that. You're going to have to excuse me. I got to read it because it's a huge long title and we're going to kind of hit on all of these. Uh, the Paid Sick Days for Public Health Emergencies and Personal and Family Care Act. The uh, fa uh, the uh, Supplemental Appropriations Act, the SNAP COVID-19 Response Waiver Act, as well as the Emergency Paid Leave Act. These are all uh, new acts that were indoctrinated to help uh, people in the United States uh, that happened to fall into a hardship. Now, the hardships are for anyone who's diagnosed with the COVID virus, or someone who has lost uh, opportunity in employment as a result of that, or if you happen to be the primary care provider for, say, a child or an adult who can't take care of themselves, and now they're either home from school or now home from work, and now you've got to take care of them because they're diagnosed or quarantined or yourself are quarantined, you know, uh, and, it, and it doesn't have to necessarily come from a health care provider. It can also come from a government uh, official or even your employer right so this act is pretty broad uh, and it does a lot of things for things like disability income and unemployment income these are all options that this act has made it a lot easier to get these benefits from um, but the first thing that we really want to kind of hone in on um, is the first off is with food, right? With the kids being home from school, a lot of people who depend on free lunches, um, the Supplemental Appropriations Act um, gives you the ability, and uh, this is run at the state level, so your state's gonna matter on how they handle this, uh, but if they get free or reduced lunches at school, there should be another alternative for them to get these meals throughout the day uh, because you're obviously not getting it from the school because the schools are closed right? Um, also, if you are trying to uh, receive SNAP because you are now unemployed or lost your hours, uh, the work requirement has been lifted and the training requirement uh, for you to get these benefits have been waived to kind of uh, make the, the process more expedient for you so that you can get that, that food for your family to eat, okay? Now, um, the next is the emergency paid uh, Leave Act. Okay, so this again applies to anybody who's lost their job or lost their hours or had a significant 
reduction in pay as a result of the coronavirus, uh, what will happen is you are eligible for up to three months of your um, pay on a monthly basis, uh, up to $4,000, uh, which it, uh, but it can only be about two thirds of your income. So they haven't specified in the law whether it's a $4,000 cap over the three months or if it's $4,000 a month, uh, but right now it just lists it as a cap of $4,000 and again, two thirds of your average income up to that point. Um, now, um, there's also the, again, the paid sick days for public health emergencies and personal and family care act, right? Uh, and that's again, um, what that does is it gives you the opportunity, first off for your employer, they have to, uh, give you the opportunity to accumulate seven days worth of sick leave and has to make immediately available to you an additional 14 days of sick leave. Again, if you're diagnosed, quarantined, uh, or something along those lines. Um, now, let's say you work for a small business and they can't afford to give you two weeks paid sick leave. Well, if that employer has 50 employees or less, uh, SBA uh, will reimburse them. So they're going to need to, you know, go to SBA and, and, and find out how they can participate. Uh, so if your employer is not made aware of it, share this video with them so that they can understand that there's help out for them as well. And if you happen to work in construction, I don't know why they specifically pointed you guys and gals out. Uh, but if you work in construction, again, you are specifically entitled uh, to, uh, to compensation or, or time off uh, with pay to help alleviate what this virus is doing for everybody. Okay. So again, there's a lot that's going on. Stay tuned this week. Hopefully this information is helpful. Uh, get with your state agencies and find out what programs are available. All the programs we talked about today are all federal guidelines that has to be sometimes rolled out by the state. Uh, if you want to en enroll in some of these programs, all of the, um, like the first family, uh, most of the, the programs in here, other than the ones for the employers, are run through the Social Security Administration. So you can apply online, you can apply by phone, you can apply by mail, you just can't apply in person for it, um, but it's there and it's waiting for you. So again, not your traditional credit repair, but hopefully this will help you prevent from needing services like ours in the next coming months. And hopefully this information will help you make a choice to make a change here with Delta. One last bit, we are gonna put the link to this act. It's a very small act, but it is packed full of information. Uh, so use that link, hopefully it's helpful, and we'll catch you at the next video in a couple of days.